Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Just going to uh, just going to give it a minute to allow um, allow people to join in. Um, so I'll be back with you very shortly. I can see a lot of people are a lot of people are joining very quickly. So I'm um, just give it a give it a minute, and we'll be back with you shortly. Right, folks. I think we uh, we might start. Um, there's more people still joining, but um, I will I'll get started with my introduction, and then um, I'll hand over to the speaker um, after I've done that. Um, so, thank you for joining us today. My name is Brandon Ward, and I'll be hosting today's session with our speaker Shannon Prem. The ongoing webinar series is brought to you by Red Exhibitions Mining Portfolio, comprising Amex, QME, and WA Mining. I would also just like to note that QME has moved from July this year to the 22nd to the 24th of September 2020 and visitor registrations for that event have um, been held in Mackay on our open so please visit the QME website uh, to register if you intend to visit. In addition, uh, WA Mining Conference and Exhibition has now moved from October this year to the 11th and 12th of November 2020 at the Perth Convention and Exhibition Centre. Uh, this presentation is part of an ongoing series of webinars and videos where we present both live and pre-recorded sessions on a broad range of topics. We will publish more information about upcoming webinars on our event websites in the near future. So can I also ask you um, to leave any questions you might have for today's presenter in the Q&A section um, in the text section there's a button towards the bottom of your screen um, just click that and enter any questions either throughout the webinar or, um, or once the presentation is completed and we'll address those at the end. Uh, if you're watching this as a recorded session uh, please see the links in the description below for further information. I'm now pleased to introduce the speaker for this session. Shannon is Business Development Manager, Technology Solutions at Hastings Deering. He has been with Hastings Deering for the last six years, and in this time, Shannon has worked with multiple mining customers in the sales of various technology production and safety systems, ranging from semi-autonomous dozer applications to fatigue monitoring. By participating in these various projects, Shannon has gained invaluable insight into the challenges faced to successfully deploy technology systems and then use these new systems to achieve operational improvements and efficiencies. So I would li now like to hand over uh, to Shannon to kick off today's session. Uh, Shannon, if you're there, uh, if you could come on with video and you'll turn your mute off, I'll hand over to Shannon and I will see you at the end for Q&A. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Brandon, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, as Brandon mentioned, my name's Shannon Prem. I'm from Hastings Daring, and today's presentation is about mining technology systems. And I'll be talking about how guidance systems can not only be used to assist machine operators, but also how the use of high precision machine guidance systems are a building block for semi-autonomous dozers and semi-autonomous drill systems. Before commencing the presentation, I'd like to take a moment to ensure everyone's safety during the webinar. Wherever you happen to be joining us from, please note at your location, uh, please note the following at your location. Make sure you have the ability to call emergency phone numbers via a desk or mobile phone. Uh, be mindful of the location you are in. If you're at a desk or meeting room, please make sure you have a clear path in the event of an evacuation. Please make sure you are familiar with evacuation alarms and assembly points and be aware of your surroundings and make sure you have taken a moment to identify any hazards within your immediate vicinity. If driving, please ensure hands-free systems are operational and if possible, pull over to a safe location. If you're in a public place, be mindful of others and use a headset. In the event of an emergency, please make sure that there is someone in your location who is able to respond. Okay, today's um, presentation is going to cover off on a lot of content. We'll be running through eight sections and we'll present information on using technology to improve productivity and efficiency and how these systems apply to semi-autonomous operations. 
Um, Brandon has already um, introduced myself, but just to restate what Brandon has covered off of you, my name is Shannon Prem. I've been with Hastings Steering for the last six years. I'm a business development manager for mining technologies. Uh, in this time, I've been responsible for customer engagements with Caterpillar Mindside Technology Systems and Services. I've worked on a wide range of projects and have been involved in the deployment of fleet management systems, um, high precision um, GPS systems, fatigue monitoring systems, as well as semi-autonomous dozer deployments. While deploying these systems are challenging, uh, fully leveraging the capabilities of a technology system to drive operational improvement takes a lot of effort, discipline and commitment. And there are some case studies that I will share today that demonstrate this. Uh, before we begin, for those who, of you who are not familiar with Caterpillar's MindStar systems and services, I wanted to provide a brief overview. This slide references the various MindStar systems and services. Productivity and safety systems include Fleet, Caterpillar's fleet management system with assignment capabilities, Terrain, which is Caterpillar's high precision guidance system for drilling, grading and loading. Detect, a system that assists operator by providing enhanced visibility and awareness to improve, um, to improve safety. Uh, Mindstar Command, um, Caterpillar's autonomous system for hauling, drilling and dozing. More recently, Caterpillar have also released a new production recording system for loading and hauling operations called Mindstar Edge, which is not shown on this slide. Hastings are currently in the final stages of deploying the first Mindstar Edge system in Queensland. Under equipment management, there is Mindstar, the Mindstar Health application that interfaces with machines to provide equipment data. And Caterpillar also range, offers a range of services targeting improvements in safety, productivity, and alternative ways to provide technology solutions via job site solutions. Hastings Deering have long been a technology service provider to the Queensland mining industry. In 1973, Hastings began providing fluid analysis services. Over time, Hastings has continued to grow technology services to provide equipment reporting, and in more recent years has successfully deployed more than 25 MindStar systems throughout Queensland, PNG, and the Northern Territory. As a result of this growth, we now have more than 2,500 connected MindStar assets in region, and we employ 39 technology specialists to support these systems. Implementing Autonomous Technologies is a journey. This slide illustrates the pathway for developing semi-autonomous capabilities and illustrates that guidance systems such as MindStar Terrain are a good starting point for developing autonomous capabilities. The presentation today will provide insights into how high precision machine guidance systems such as MindStar Terrain can not only assist operators and provide a short-term return on investment, but how they also apply to remote control and semi-autonomous systems. Okay, what is the largest cause of error? One thing that is common across all industries is human error. We expect people to be highly predictable machines behaving consistently, logically and safely at all times. However, humans do not all have the same level of experience or have the necessary ability to correct, to do the correct thing all the time. As well as experiencing various degrees of fatigue, these variations can lead to oper inefficient operations. This highlights the role for technology systems in supporting machine operators in achieving compliance and consistency. This brings us to Caterpillar's high precision machine guidance system, MindStar Terrain. Terrain is a high precision system used in drilling, grading and loading operations. New generation D10, D11 and MD6310 drills um, come with terrain onboard hardware included as a standard item from factory. This means that large dozers automatically come with terrain onboard hardware. High precision guidance systems are commonly used in mining. To explain how terrain works, it uses the latest communication technology to exchange data between the office and the machines in the field. It provides real-time positional feedback via an in-cab display 
for equipment operators, as well as survey information for mine managers and site planners, including up to the minute machine location and operational status and progress towards completion of work plans. Terrain gives machine operators the real-time guidance they need to do their jobs more safely and efficiently while providing machine while providing mine site managers with timely information and advanced tools to help increase mine productivity. So how does terrain help improve productivity, efficiency and operator performance? When it comes to cutting and filling to plan, color-coded cut and fill maps provide real-time feedback on progress towards the final grade, resulting in more accurate construction of bench stokes, roads and ramps. To maintain consistent operator performance, one key feature of terrain is that it allows operators to create their own flat or inclined service for building pads or ramps by the touchscreen display. If a digital plan for a task hasn't been prepared, the operator can generate their own surface. This feature helps operators of varying skill and experience achieve greater consistency. To maximize machine utilization, terrain includes, utilize, terrain includes time utilization functionality, allowing delay information to be captured. Terrain also records time cycle times and reports excessive idle time. Terrain also improves communication via a mobile app that lets supervisors view progress of equipment. They can see the location of all terrain equipped machines, assign tasks and validate design plans without having to drive back to the mine office. Plus, updates made on the mobile app are communicated to machine operators in real time, helping to keep everyone informed and on schedule, even when changes are required. In high utilization environments, terrain tracks machine locations and production volumes in near real time. This minimizes rework and ensures material is moved to the right place the first time. The system shares files between all terrain machines to allow updating of grade plans in near real time. For getting the most capacity, the most from capacity constrained operations, terrain shows operators visual job progress to reduce rework. Terrain also measures days of production volumes to track the amount of material moved and it enables instant reassignment of operators, saving time and reducing miscommunication. Terrain also reduces survey costs. Each terrain instrumented machine is a survey tool that captures surface data in near real time. Having the design plan digitally in the cab, terrain eliminates surveying and staking, which means fewer people are needed on foot near heavy equipment. Terrain also improves safety. By allowing dozers to operate near infrastructure or other hazards, the use of avoidance zones and alarm improves safety by keeping machines out of restricted areas and away from hazards. Now that we've covered off uh, features of MindStar Terrain, I'd like to explain how Terrain integrates with base machine features such as auto carry and automated blade control. The Terrain with blade control functionality is available on D9, D10 and D11 dozers. And this video explains how the Terrain onboard system integrates with the base machine control and auto carry features to control the blade of the dozer for greater compliancy, compliance to plan. Mm -hmm.
So that video shows how the auto carry and automated blade control features not only enhance operator performance, it's also a, it's a building block uh, for the command for dozing autonomous system. Caterpillar have completed two terrain with blade control studies. This example on screen shows an existing haul road that was originally built without terrain. While the, the white dotted line shows the profile of the haul road prior to the road being recut with the terrain. The road was recut by a dozer using terrain with blade control and the operator was not only able to complete the cut as per the plan the first time, it was also completed with a 10, within 10% of the set tolerances. In another terrain with blade control study, a manned and terrain a manned and a terrain with blade control dozer were tested by building a new banked turn haul road side by side. Not only was the blade control dozer able to build the road 29% faster, it also achieved a higher degree of accuracy. In addition to the improved efficiency and accuracy, this, the system greatly reduced the level of operator fatigue as a result of the operator not having to fight the controls of the dozer to keep the blade on design. The next step towards semi-autonomous dozing is command for dozing, which introduces the remote control capabilities which complements the terrain and blade control systems. Command for dozing takes the operator off the machine and lets them work from a nearby or remote location. Command for dozing is a scalable solution with three configuration options. Once the machine is fitted with onboard remote control hardware, Operators can control the machine via a remote console worn over the shoulder or via a remote operator station. The remote console allows one-to-one -one pairing for line of sight remote control. A remote operator station can be configured for line of sight operations. If a camera system is fitted to the dozer, non-line of sight remote operations can be enabled. Adding the semi-autonomous hardware to the machine enables semi-autonomous operations where three to four machines can be paired with one remote operator station. Common operational challenges faced in mining operations is the hazards associated with having operators in dozers. The command for dozing system removes the operator from the cap. Not only does it remove the operator from the hazardous conditions such as dust, noise and vibration, it also reduces fatigue by being in a more comfortable environment. A SAT system allows, operators, allows one operator station to be paired with three to four dozers at one time. This in turn can reduce travel costs and infrastructure needs, allows one operator to control multiple dozers and increases productivity through greater machine utilization. SATS is ideal for slot and dozer push applications. In coal environments, SATS can be used for push to edge applications where overburden and waste material is pushed into a void. Locations with poor strip ratios with an excess of shot material, SATS applications also supports backstacking, backstacking and tip to head applications. Both the push to edge and the back stack, stacking applications can be applied to production dozing and reclamation work. Caterpillar have documented, have documented a case study based on a customer that instrumented seven SATS dozers and are now achieving a re return on investment of approximately $2 million annually. In our region, we are seeing customers achieve similar results with productivity gains through greater consistency and improved utilisation. In, in each shift, a machine is achieving around one and a half hours of greater utilisation, which equates to around two to three hours of additional productivity per dozer in a 24 hour period. This improvement is attributed to a decrease in operator fatigue and fewer operator breaks. Similar to dozing applications, MindStar Terrain is also a high precision system for drills. Terrain for drilling allows operators to drill every hole precisely to plan at the proper angle and the correct elevation. 
This section of the presentation will explain how CAT's MindStar terrain drilling system helps operators with compliance to design and how terrain for drilling is required for automating the drilling process. Uh, to give myself a quick break, I've got a short video that I'll quickly play that uh, explains the terrain for drilling system. Let's say our drill pattern design looks like this. But our actual holes end up like this. When a drill pattern is inconsistent, holes have to be redrilled, or at least fixed. And that extra work leads to inefficient operations, excessive use of the machine, and additional use of explosives, which is one of the highest cost items on a site. Inconsistent drill patterns also result in a lot of differently sized rock in the blasted material and that creates a whole new set of challenges. When rocks are too big, well, it's tough digging. It puts a lot of extra wear on the shovel. And it makes it difficult for operators to optimally load trucks. You can get loads that are often over the targeted payload or under it. And that means more cycles to remove the same amount of dirt. Not so efficient. Now imagine what happens when one of these oversized rocks makes its way from the shovel to the haul truck, and finally to the hopper at the crusher. Bad news, right? To avoid that, we'll need to put in more time for more rock breaking, which will impact throughput and cause wear and tear on the crusher. So pattern spacing is one variable, but what happens when holes aren't drilled as deeply as they should be? Well, the blast leaves behind solid, unexploded rock that's a lot more difficult to dig. Loading times become longer, and the operator is forced to dig around the rock toes. It also adds strain and wear on your loading equipment and damage to the ground engaging tools. There's also an impact on your hauling fleet. As loaded trucks travel over this uneven ground, they experience pitching and racking in the frame, which leads to even more wear and maintenance downtime. It also increases tire wear and can even cause premature failure. These conditions are also challenging for support equipment that is used to maintain grade on the uneven bench floor. So what happens when holes go too deep? First, any unnecessary drilling is a waste of consumables and time. It also causes additional wear on your drills, and if the holes aren't stemmed correctly, there's potential to use and waste explosive material. As the video demonstrated, drilling holes in the right place and to the right elevation is important. Having a digital plan allows operators to execute the patterns more accurately. Terrain helps reduce the over and under drilling of holes on a pattern by drilling to an elevation, not a depth. This improves future bench heights and reduces the need for re-drilling holes. Minimizing variability reduces explosive and consumable costs. Overdrilling can be a regular occurrence, increasing consumable and blasting costs. Terrain tracks drill consumables for planned replacement based on actual usage and also alerts operators to pipe in hole events. Using avoidance zones, terrain improves safety for operators and other, other personnel. The terrain for drilling system allows supervisors to get accurate, actionable data from each drill. Terrain enables monitoring of operator efficiency and machine utilization. Train also shares data with other drills on the location, depth, and current status of each hole. The system provides reporting on drill productivity, availability, utilization, and compliance to plan. The measure while drilling, uh, the measure Measured while drilling performance and strata features provides live strata information to the operator and to the office to achieve better fragmentation for smoother downstream operations. Terrain for drilling is a requirement for command for drilling and command for drilling also incorporates a scalable approach. Starting with the base machine, factory ready one touch automation, factory ready one touch automation removes some of the operator variability through four key features. Auto level, auto mast, auto drill, and auto multipass. The auto level feature enables auto leveling and retracting 
of the, of the machine jacks and provides safe, solid footing on uneven ground. The auto mast feature raises and lowers the mast and locks it in at the proper angle. The auto drill feature automates the drilling cycles. It has reactive drilling control to maintain optimum performance parameters and air pressure. This ensures that a quality hole is drilled that stands up until it can be loaded with explosives. Auto multipass provides automated rod handling. Terrain for drilling allows drillers to virtually see the design location of holes in the X, Y, Z quadrants. The hole to hole guidance allows operators to drill according to plan and elevation readings, allow and allow drillers to drill to the correct elevation of each hole to the, according to the plan and design. Operator Mission Assist eliminates operator variability by allowing MindStar to take over as the con consistent operator, while the driller is monitoring the machine from onboard. This is a similar feature to an autopilot system. This feature automates the complete drilling cycle, including automated training, while the operator remains in the cab of the machine. Operator Mission Assist is integrated into the base machine display and removes operator variance by automating the drilling process. Operator Mission Assist leverages the base machine one-touch automation feature and ties them together into a single autonomous drill cycle. It autonomously trams and positions the drill over the design hole location and activates the required drill automation functions. Utilising high precision GPS, terrain um, drills the correct drills to the correct elevation. The semi-autonomous drilling um, system, also known as autonomous single row drilling, enables autonomous drilling of a single row while removing the operator from the cab. This allows drills to be used during times that the drill would normally be sitting idle, such as shift change or lunch breaks. This in increases drill utilisation by turning available time into utilised time. Operator utilisation is increased as one operator can manage multiple semi-autonomous machines from a tablet device or a remote operator station. This increases utilisation by co through continuous operations over lunch breaks, blast delays and shift change. Multiple machine control allows one operator to monitor and operate multiple drills through a portable tablet interface or a remote operator station. This feature makes it possible for one operator to control multiple machines. Autonomous drilling system, um, also known as autonomous multi-row drilling, is currently in development. This feature will increase fleet utilisation as it becomes easier to manage more drills with less operators. Safety is increased by converting all drills into autonomous drills, thus reducing the amount of human interaction with the machine and in turn reducing human error. To summarise the benefits of autonomy, um, the system is very easy to use. The operator interfaces are highly intuitive. Drill operators who have participated in training sessions, once they've been shown how to use the operator mission assist functionality, they have been able to self-guide themselves to put the drill into semi-autonomous mode. Built-in acceptable tolerances improve equipment utilisation, productivity and operator effectiveness. This allows the adjustment of collar elevations on uneven ground to ensure consistent toes in the same plane. The use of acceptable tolerances reduces hole-to-hole -hole tramming time. The autonomous system has built-in safety locks. That ensures that the machine is being operated according to safe work procedures. This reduces potential for machine damage or personal injury while also ensuring correct machine usage. Autonomy allows, drills, allows the drill to be operated within the OEM recommendations. This preserves the machine life and reduces the GET tool life wear by limiting operations to be within the OEM parameters for both the machine and the drill tool. Studies comparing autonomy versus manned machines equipped with terrain for drilling have been completed. 
While the benefits customers see with terrain for drilling are being captured with autonomy, additional improvements are also being identified. MineStar Command takes over as your drill operator, providing consistent position, to position accuracy over holes, consistent drill to target elevation, and consistent drill parameters per OEM recommendations. Improved cycle times allow the drill to spend more time drilling. Uh, MyStar Command's tramming and leveling al algorithms ensure the drill cycle time operates efficiently. This reduces time spent leveling, time spent propelling, and time deleveling. High precision GPS allows MineStar Command to autonomously position the machine over the hole with centimeter level accuracy. The same GPS system enables the drill to accurately drill to the design elevation with the same accuracy. Multiple site studies show an increase of 12.5% in the overall hourly gains through continuous autonomous operations. Sites are now able to maintain production targets by get, gaining at least two and a half hours of available drill time uh, and are turning, utilized time, turning this time into utilized time through autonomy. To summarize today's presentation, high precision guidance systems provide a good entry point for mine sites seeking to improve productivity and efficiency. While high precision machine guidance systems are a platform that enables future autonomous operations, they also provide an ROI in assisting operator performance. MineStar Terrain is a low cost, easy to deploy system that can be quickly implemented. Hastings Deering have also successfully deployed terrain over a cellular network, allowing for cloud hosting that reduces network and infrastructure costs. Hastings Deering have used this approach to activate onboard terrain features on new machines that have terrain fitted X factory. For more information on this, on, on this approach, please speak to either your local Caterpillar representative or your local dealer. That's the end of today's presentation. I'll now hand back to Brandon uh, for Q&A and to wrap up the webinar. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Shannon. Uh, very insightful, and I'm sure uh, everybody managed to get quite a bit, um, bit out of that. Certainly, I learned a few th new things today, so uh, so well done. Um, I see we have got a few questions coming through. So uh, for everybody that is currently on the webinar, um, if you do have any questions, please do post them um, in the Q&A uh, section. Um, so a couple of questions that have come through here, um, Shannon. Um, can MindStar terrain be fitted to non-Caterpillar equipment? Uh, you're on mute there, Shannon. Sorry. Uh, yes, it can. So it, it's it's an agnostic system. It can be fitted to um, both CAT equipment and, and other manufacturers' equipment. Um, so um, yeah, again, a dealer can help um, you know any customer that's looking to um, fit a, a system um, to a, to a non-CAT machine. Great. Thanks. And I've got another question here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce his name, but um, Appychart underscore R. So thank you for your question. Um, what is the specification of high precision GPS? Um, there's a few other uh, guys on the line that might be able to help us answer that question. Uh, to give, a, I guess, an initial uh, response, um, the specification of the high precision GPS system is plus or minus 200 mil. Um, so in terms of its, its tolerance in accuracy, um, that's the level of accuracy that a high precision system can do. I might also um, pass to Dave Jensen. Uh, he might be able to elaborate on that response. Yep, finally and managed to unmute. Um, <clears throat> so the GPS receivers that we use are actually survey grade receivers. So we run in RTK mode. So where the receiver is, is as accurate as a survey rover. Um, the tolerance uh, Shannon mentions is actually the tolerance that we use on board for when we're say um, cutting to a particular surface. You know, there will be a margin obviously allowing for some wear and tear on the machines and, uh, and measure up tolerances. Great, thanks David. Um, we've got another question here, Shannon, from uh, Abdul Mazid. So thank you, Abdul, for your question. Uh, what is the technique in use to get hole placement accuracy?
you're on mute, Shannon. Sorry. Yeah, I might ask to, to Dave Jensen. Dave, is that a, a question you, you can field? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, look, the technique is the same as surveys. So, um, you know, we have high precision receivers on the machine. We know the offsets for those receivers to where the projected build, drill bit position is, allowing for pitch and roll of the machine. And so um, purely guidance is, you know, we're indicating where the, the collar of the toe, uh, the collar of the hole will be. And we're also indicating to the operator where the projected bit position uh, is, i.e. where the bit will touch the ground. So the operator purely aligns those two um, points and, um, and he's uh, right on the target. Thanks, Dave. Um, one last question here. If there's any more that want to come through, please do submit them. Um, but um, I guess, and this is this has been a question that has um, come through in previous webinars when we've been talking about, you know, digital twins and uh, and you know data optimization. But I guess it applies to the system as well. Which are um, what are the network requirements for these types of systems? And I, I guess there might be two parts to that. Um, I'm thinking immediately um, in terms of data and and how um, you know whether that's over um, a network, how that how that happens but there might also be other network requirements behind the scenes. So Shannon, would you mind answering that one? Um, yeah, sure. Um, to, to, to give it an initial answer, you know, it, it operates over standard Wi-Fi protocols. So um, the, the system, you know, across, you know, is commonly deployed um, in locations that have just standard Wi-Fi um, um, networks in use. Um, we do have customers that also use it over LTE networks. Uh, so standard MyStar terrain is, you know, will work over both networks. We've deployed it successfully over a cellular network. Um, and once you get into the, um, the command function, so command for drilling or command for dozing, um, a, a Cisco Wi-Fi network is one of the approved networks uh, for, for the system. Great, thanks, Shannon. Um, interesting question here that's come up, um, again from Abdul, and I'm going to assume from Abdul's uh, couple of questions that he's put up here, is uh, he's either a, a, you know, at one of the uh, universities in Queensland, um, I would imagine, and potentially um, actually teaching. So um, he asks, um, again, would you be interested in uh, using university experts? But I think the more important question here is, they say that they're interested in learning more about the technology that you're using in order to educate, you know, the future workforce. Um, is, is that some, I know you guys run apprenticeship programs and all of that, but are there other streams here that perhaps, um, you know, universities and students particularly um, and I'm assuming engineering, looking to get into work in the mining space, um, how, how do they access um, anyone at Hastings or all those programs that you might have in place? I think the easiest way for them, we have a, um, a help desk uh, via um, our technology business. So there, there's an email address, um, which is technology at hastingsdeering.com.au. Um, anyone that's got in, interest in, I guess, just learning more about it, um, you know, could contact, uh, contact us via that method. Uh, I do also have my contact details on screen. I, I didn't jump to the last slide, so I'll just share that now. Anyone seeking just general information or would like to have a discussion or, you know, around um, the learning more about the systems, um, yeah, we, we're happy to have that discussion. So it's just yeah, contact either myself um, or, or the you know, Hastings Steering as a business, yep. um, put those people in touch with the right people. That's great. And uh, got another question that's just popped through is, uh, when will a Caterpillar autonomous drill be available? GMG level four. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. I know it's in development. I know it's uh, being field tested at the moment. I would suspect that it's approximately 12 months away. Uh, there are a couple of CAT commercial reps on the call as well. So either Dave Nagel or Matt Sampson might be able to give a more precise update on the timing. Dave, did you want to jump on? Yeah, look, Dave, Dave Nagel, are you able to hear me okay there? Yep, got yep. Now, I'm not familiar with um, the GMG Level 4. Um, what, what I can say is that the, the current generation of Caterpillar drills are being built um, with the, the base technology capable of being moved to the autonomous platform. So straight out of the box or off the shelf today, 
Um, they've already got that capability to be installed with the, um, well, first of all, that they have that embedded, um, those automation features, which Shannon spoke through with the, um, the auto raise, auto mast, et cetera. Um, then that can be scaled up with terrain that can happen today. Um, that can also be scaled up to um, the semi-autonomous um, or, or on the way through, you've got the, the operator mission assist, then you've got semi-autonomous. Um, so all of that's available today. Um, as Shannon mentioned, the, the full, um, uh, full pattern autonomy is currently in development and um, I, I wouldn't put any um, strong dates out there, but it, it's certainly, um, certainly on the roadmap and um, pending release. Fantastic. Um, that's, and I'm not sure if I've asked this question, so just correct me if I'm wrong. I think I may have missed it when another few popped through, but um, the question was, can MindStar terrain be fitted to non-Caterpillar equipment? Did I ask that? I can't remember. Yeah, you, you had asked that one, Brad. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, so yeah, we've got a number of installations in region uh, where the, the system's you know, working uh, perfectly on non-Cat um, equipment. Great. Fantastic. Um, anything else you wanted to add, Shannon? Anything that's uh, new in development or exciting on the horizon? Um, I know, obviously, uh, in the situation we find ourselves in, any positive news um, out there is always good. Um, I know the, uh, you know, the the regions up in up in Mackay and the Greater Bowen Basin, etc. Um, I'm sure are looking forward to some positivity in the next few months. But um, is there anything from Hastings' side that um, you guys are seeing in terms of the sector that might be useful just to to share with the audience while we before we sign off? Um, yeah, one small thing that I did touch on in the presentation was that we are in the final stages of deploying the MindStar Edge system in, in Queensland. So we have a customer that, that's um, um, signed up to that system. Um, internationally or globally, you know, CAD have deployed this system um, at many sites. I, last I heard, and the, the number may have changed a little bit, was that there was already 10 um, um, sites um, using the MindStar Edge product. Uh, Hastings are, are rolling out the first installation in, in, in Queensland. So this is the first one in our region. Um, and that customer um, will potentially be a reference site for us. So any in-region customers, um, you know, that, that would like to find out more about the system or, or, or see it in use or see the capabilities of it, in the future we will have the ability to, to demonstrate that. So that, that, that's a good news story in terms of a, a new technology. It's low cost, requires low network um, capabilities, uh, very minimal operator um, inputs. Um, it does have the ability to um, um, you know, it uses um, th things like um, virtual learning um, and, and it can operate quite independently. So it's a, it's a very innovative system uh, and we're quite proud and pleased to be um, rolling it out in our region. So um, th that's probably the, the one good news story I can, I can share with the audience today. Great. Thank you, Shannon. That's, um, that's great news and it's good to see that cutting edge technology coming up in, uh, into Queensland. Um, I think that concludes um, today's session. So thank you, Shannon. We really appreciate um, all the information you've shared and also to, to your colleagues um, for coming on and answering some of those technical questions. So thank you, everyone. Um, and again, thank you to, to everyone that joined us um, as a participant today as well. Um, we hope you got some value out of today's session. And um, that concludes the session for today and future webinars um, and will be sent through to you um, and the dates um, in the near future. So thank you, everyone, and have a good afternoon.